Internal storage on Max is expensive, and if you edit your videos in Final Cut Pro, you know how fast your hard drive can fill up. In this video, we'll take a look at a few different ways you can save hard drive space without giving up any quality in your videos. Hi, my name is Serge, and if you're new here on this channel, we try and help you make the most out of your equipment and software and tell a better story by making better videos. Today, we're taking a look at media management, so even if you have the smallest internal drive, you can still edit your videos without running out of storage space. First thing I want to talk about today is render files. Anytime you modify your clip in any way, add an effect or a transition, even add a basic title above your clip, Final Cut Pro makes a render file for that clip. Final Cut Pro basically creates another clip with whatever effect you have applied to your original clip burnt right into the render file. There's an advantage to this. Editing and playing back this render file is much easier in your system, so even the most base level mocks, especially anything with an M1 or an M2 chip, can still be used to edit video. And because of these render files, you get nice smooth playback and no drop frames. Most of the time, these render files are not necessary, they're just there to improve your editing experience. The problem with render files is they take up a ton of space on your hard drive. Fortunately, because these render files are not necessary, you can easily and safely delete them without ever having to worry about losing any of your media. You can delete render files for a specific project, event, or even your entire Final Cut Pro library. You might temporarily see a performance decrease, but if necessary, Final Cut Pro will re-render what's needed and get you back to editing with no hiccups. What I generally do is after my project is complete and exported, if I want to keep that project so I can go back to it in the future, is I delete all the generator files for that project. To do this, select your project in the media browser, go up to the menu bar, and select File and Delete Generated Project Files. In the pop-up window, select Delete Render Files and Delete Optimized and Proxy Media. My project's still there, all my media is still there, but deleting the render files for a 6 minute project dropped my Final Cut Pro library size by over 30 gigabytes. You can also do this for your events with more than one project in them. Just select the event in the media browser and in the menu bar click File and Delete Generated Event Files. To maximize your hard drive space, you can go in and delete the render files for your entire library. Select your library in the media browser and click File and Delete Generated Library Files. Select Delete Render Files and All and Delete Optimized and Proxy Media. In my example, my library went from being over 600 gigabytes to under 200. And this is all very safe to do. You never have to worry about losing anything. If I open up one of my projects, everything's still there and Final Cut Pro goes right back to generating the necessary files needed for smooth editing experience. Another thing you can do to save drive space is tell Final Cut Pro not to make any of these render files by turning off background rendering. Now, depending on the specs of your computer and the complexity of your edit, you might see a performance decrease, but you can always render specific parts manually. This way, you only render what's needed and your library size will be significantly smaller. To turn off background rendering, press Command comma to open up Final Cut Pro's preferences, select the playback tab, and uncheck background render. Now, when you're editing your project and come across one or more clips that can't be played back in real time, you can render just that part of your timeline. Command click the clips in your timeline where you're having playback issues, and from the menu bar select Modify and Render Selection, or use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl R. You'll see a gray dotted line above your timeline disappear as your clips get rendered. When this line's gone, you should be able to play back your clips in real time. Rendering your clips manually might take a bit more time, but your library will be much smaller. When you import your media into Final Cut Pro, you have a couple options. You can choose to copy your media to library or leave files in place. If you copy to library, Final Cut Pro does exactly that. It makes a copy of your media file and stores it inside your Final Cut Pro library. So if your clip is already in your hard drive, it gets duplicated and now you have two copies of the same clip. If you choose to leave files in place, all Final Cut Pro does is reference the file from its original location on your hard drive without making any copies of it. The downside to this is if you move, rename, or accidentally delete your original file, you end up with missing media in your project. For most people, I would strongly recommend the copy to library option. 
This way, all your media is safely stored inside the Final Cut Pro library container and you don't have to worry about losing it. If the files you're importing are already on your internal drive, once your import is complete, go back and delete these files off your hard drive so you don't have duplicates taking up space. If you're unsure or don't remember what option you chose during import, simply select the clip in your media browser and in the inspector, select the info tab. Towards the bottom of the window, you'll see your clip's location. Any clips that are copied to library will say your library's name. Files left in place will normally say Macintosh HD, or if they're on an external drive, will say the name of your drive. If you have a combination of clips in your library and in external locations, you can consolidate your library and move all your clips into your library container. Select your library in the media browser, and from the menu bar select File, and Consolidate Library Media. In the pop-up window, set your media destination to in library and click OK. Give Final Cut Pro a few minutes to copy all your media. Everything will be copied to your media container inside your Final Cut Pro library, and you can go through your drive and delete any media clips stored in random locations on your drive. The way to save the most amount of space on your internal drive is to run your Final Cut Pro library off an external drive. And with the price and the speed of solid state drives like the Samsung T7, there's really no reason not to. If you're making a new Final Cut Pro library and want to save it on an external drive, this is very simple. Connect your device and open up Final Cut Pro. Make a new library. Give it a name and choose your external drive as a storage location. With your library selected, go to the Inspector window and click the Modify Settings button for Storage Locations. Change the Media setting to In Library. So now, when you import your media and copy your files to library, everything will be stored on your external drive. If you already have a Final Cut Pro library on your internal drive and want to move it to your external drive, it's also not that hard. First, before moving your library, delete all your generated files like we talked about before. Select your library in the Media Browser and choose File and Delete Generated Library Files. To save the most space, select All Options and click OK. Go back to File and select Reveal in Finder. This opens up a new Finder window with your library selected. Quit Final Cut Pro. Back in Finder, simply click and drag your Final Cut Pro library to your external drive. Now, we need to make sure all our media has moved with our library. You can do this once again by consolidating your library media. Double click on your library to open it. With your library selected, go to the Inspector window and select Modify Settings. Make sure the Media option is set to In Library and click OK. Click the Consolidate Media button to copy all your media into your new library. Depending on the size of your library, this might take a few minutes. Once this is done, double check and make sure your move library has all your media. If everything looks good, you can go ahead and delete your original library off your internal drive. If you have a setup like mine, where you have an office computer and a laptop for editing on the go using proxy libraries, it's also a good option. I made a video about proxy libraries. You can watch by clicking here, or I'll link it in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back here next week.